following takes place between 10 p.m. One, two, three, four! Guten Morgen, my brothers and fräuleins, on this, our 27th episode of the Good Morning Guys podcast. Nope. Thanks <laughs> so much for joining us on this fine morning, <laughs> afternoon, evening, or neat, as we continue discussing the game of life amidst the other games we love to watch and play. I am one of your hosts, Digger the Hamster's first and last victim, and probably the only person to have accidentally turned their pet fish into ice cubes, Lucas Ham Swisher. To my right, Maggie the Cotton-Headed Ninny Doggins, favorite belly rubber, and a cat-herding champion, Patrick Novacell. I am on the 28th episode, while you are on the 27th. Fantastic! <laughs> Dang it, I'm starting that over. I'm not doing 27th nope. again. I already messed nope. that up. Keep going. Yes. Nope, yes, keep I going. Am. No, corrected it. No, no editing from here on out. <laughs> Next up. Uh, uh, to my other right, Boomer the Black Lab, slightly less hairy brother, and our semi professional wildcat trainer, Ronnie Johantis. Hello. And finally, to my last right, name. Cisco the long haired Chihuahua's music and bird loving master, DJ Marcy B, 2K19, Mark Boucher. Just for the record, I am on episode 28 as well. Fantastic. You guys are in the future, or I'm stuck in the past. Who even knows? Oh, man, if this is your first time joining us, I'm sorry. Welcome. Could I get you a cup of tea or a crumpet? If it's not your first time, welcome Could back, you? friend. Pull up a chair and take it easy. No se casa e tua casa. No, I don't have any tea or crumpets, so... I am guess I'm probably lying when I'm saying that I want to get them crumpet, but I'm already lying. Well, if this is their cause... first time here, just so they know, this is actually our 28th time here. That is correct. 28th time. And since Patrick will not edit any of this, and you will get to <laughs> witness this train wreck of a beginning, congratulations. This is our worst one yet on this the 28th episode. This is all about episode. pets. Okay. <laughs> Let's just skip right to the topic. Here we go. <laughs> I'm dancing right now <laughs> to the topic music. Woo. All right. So, guys. Anywho, <laughs> let's continue <laughs> this train wreck <laughs> with one of our now regular segments. For the fourth week in a row, the newly named Fackler's Fantastic and Frenzied Slow Fire Slog. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Let's go. Let's do it. Super listener Chad gave us yet another set of quickfire questions. Totally random quickfire, this one is titled. We're going to go in whatever order the spirit leads you to go. Not even going to call That's it out. A, oh, no. That's a disaster. disaster. Yeah. Yeah. I think we should just oh, call it. because all the planning in the past, that made it go real smooth. So guess what? I mean, I'm just reading it. was due to planning, I don't even want to know what like freelance At least it was be. controlled chaos. Yeah. Now it's, <laughs> now it's what it is. It's all, all right. I think we should just call it Fackler's Frenzy. Fa- Fackler's Frenzy? Yeah. All right. I'll cut off the other stuff. So... Uh, Pat, can you edit this out too and then change it to Fackler's <laughs> Frenzy? Sure. You're a liar. Okay. <laughs> Basically, Anywho, anytime, let's continue. anytime you ask Pat to edit something out, he will absolutely a, not edit that thing out. It's a guarantee he won't do it, right? <laughs> exactly. Of course. All right, let's get into Fackler's Frenzy. Here we go. Text or call? Mm. Call. Text. 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 Unless it's the Ghostbusters, then I'll call them. Okay, next. Paper or plastic? Paper. For what? I'm guessing groceries? Well, could it be a paper plate or a plastic plate? A, a paper spoon or a plastic what about, spoon? What about a, a paper <laughs> cup or a plastic cup? Yeah. I feel like we need more details to answer. And the is answer this a cup is in yes. baseball or for drinking? I don't remember what I How said. How can we this answer point. this question? We don't know. So paper. I'm just I'm just going with that. Paper. Save the environment. Plus, if we are talking about paper or plastic, you know, for groceries, you know, back in the day when you would like take the, the paper bags and you would turn it into like your school book covers. Yes. That's yeah. smart thinking. Smart mm-hmm. thinking, Mark. 
if only Patrick and Ronnie. Yeah, could but think what if that you're fast. choosing a car that's made out of paper or plastic, and you just chose the paper one? What about your house? I would take the plastic. Car. Either way, yeah, exactly. Either way, you're going house? pretty wrong with that one. <laughs> I'll take plastic. Environment hater. Did everyone go? Did you? Yes. Go? <laughs> Except you, Patrick. Wait, I already said paper. on you, buddy. You did not. Yeah, Play did. that back. Get oh. back. I'm listening right now. Nope, you didn't say it. Okay, next. Coke. <laughs> no. Cake or pie? <laughs> Coke cake. Coke <laughs> <laughs> cake. That's actually a thing. <laughs> hey, I'm no. dyslexic. Don't make fun of me. Fake news. Yeah, you're Fake right. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> cake or pie? Is that a real thing? That is actually no. a thing. You can make a cake out of using Coca-Cola. Obviously, you use other things, but... You can make a turkey out of Coke, too. Can you make a beer cake? <laughs> No, it's got to be your bowl. Oh, right. A bowl cake? you got to stick your hand right <laughs> up <cake>. there. <laughs> what was the actual question? <laughs> cake, cake or plastic? <laughs> yes. I'll take the cake. <laughs> cake car or, or a pie car? <laughs> is, it, is it apple or is it pumpkin? What would you rather have, cake or pie? Is that what the question? Yes, is? that yeah. is the question. Cake or pie. That was a good discussion. <laughs> I'm going pie. Ah, really? Yeah. A lot of cakes out there? Cheesecake Cake's part overrated. Of the, part, of the, part of it? I don't think cake, cheesecake is a cake. I, right, cheesecake, I, I choose cheesecake then. It's, it's a pie. Yeah, I feel it's like. totally a pie. Uh, cheese pie? Cheese pie, yeah. That makes sense. Yep. yep. Cheese pie. That's what the Dutch call it. I'm going cake. Fantastic. Coke or Pepsi? I didn't even answer yet. <laughs> Playback. I'm listening. Yep, you did. Okay, next. <laughs> he wants to get this quick fire in. No, I really thought you answered. I'll take it. cake. Cake. All right, fair enough. Uh, Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. Coke. Right now, Pepsi. Root beer. That was not one of the options, nope. dang nope. it. Nope. <laughs> you can't note me, Patrick. You do it all the time. Nope. Double standard hypocrite. Nope. Ooh. Fake news. Well, if I'm a double standard hypocrite, am I just normal? I answer the question right. <laughs> <laughs> double negative normal? there. Move the first move normal, no. and the second move you're back to being a hypocrite again. Sorry, I am not never answering this question right. Good call. Dill or sweet pickle? I still didn't answer the question. <laughs> Unbelievable. You're not going in the right order, Ronnie. <laughs> there is no order. I know. No, I'm just kidding. I went first that time. (laughs) (laughs) Hoping for a second chance. Sweet pickle. I guess sweet pickle, but I don't really like pickles. Dill pickle. Agreed. Dill pickle. Mustard or ketchup? Or now wait, is it ketchup or catsup? No, it's it's ketchup. Cat soup Cat's or soup. ketchup? I firmly believe it depends on what you're putting this on. So certain things you just can't switch out ketchup and mustard. You still have to choose. It's an or. I feel Must- like like if you had to use one forever m- on everything, mustard forever? or ketchup. Forever? Mustard or ketchup. You only get one for the rest of your life. Mustard or ketchup. I feel like ketchup is a little bit more universal than than mustard is. Is that how you base your? Condiments is what's more universal. <laughs> that's very, that's very existential and philosophical. He's thinking for in terms of lifetime. <laughs> I hate you all. Um, <laughs> no, I'm saying you can use it with lots of different types of food, whereas mustard, I feel like you're a little more limited. I mean, yeah, I get that. Mustard has turd in it, so I don't know that that's a good. Choice. That's also a fair point. Fair enough. Gross. I'm never going to say mustard <laughs> <laughs> the same way again. Patrick, what'd you say? <clears throat> plastic. Okay. Gosh. Or wait, plastic or backwards? Ketchup. <laughs> Thank you. Ketchup. Ketchup. <laughs> We're halfway there. <laughs> Spicy or sweet? Spicy. All Sweet. the time. Spicy. Sweet. Pen or pencil? Pencil. Pencil. 
That's a tough question. What about one of those erasing pens? Oh, those are those are black magic. Those scare me. How about that? Those, those aren't natural. They could be blue magic too, or even red magic. Yeah, I guess it depends on the color you choose. <laughs> But pencil already has the word. Pencil, though. You're going to go with pencil, sorry. Pen pen is already in the word pencil, so I'm going to go with pencil. You get both that way. Pen and a soul. Pen <laughs> sill. Uh, staple or paper clip? Paper clip. And I'll tell you why. Because it's a lot harder to get a staple out. Uh, yeah, but there's no paper clip gun. Yeah, but if you drop if you drop a stack of papers with a staple, you just pick it up. If you got a paper clip though, everywhere You're screwed. I'm going staple. Staple. Uh paper clip. Thank you, Lucas. I got your back, Mark. Comb <laughs> or brush? For who? Your mom. My mom? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hi, Sheila, um, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sheila. Now who's, who, now, who's combing my mom's hair? Or brushing <laughs> my mom's hair? Ronnie. No, 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 I don't agree to this. <laughs> <laughs> what if I just walk into the room and he's brushing her hair? <laughs> like, I hate this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a new brush. <laughs> I'm going with comb. I will also go with comb. And I'm splitting it with brush. All right, last normal one. Glasses or contacts? Mm, contacts during the day. Glasses at night. Look out. For those, un- contacts. For those unable to All watch at home, Mark is wearing glasses. So therefore, glasses. <laughs> Do you have contacts? I don't. I absolutely hate contacts. I, I don't like the idea of putting stuff that close to my eye. Mm. Yeah, I was the same way when I got contacts, but man, it's glorious. I just, it I'm glorious. just so flinchy when it comes to that. Like when I have to go to the optometrist, like yeah, that's horrible. Do they still do the thing where they puff the air like right into your eyeball? The yep. coma test. Yeah, man, that is a... You think, <laughs> and waiting you think on that they would have uh, made advances scary. in science and they no longer have to puff your air in your eye to test for that? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. They're just doing it for fun. I they think are, they are. They're, 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 they're having and giggles. Yeah. beforehand, and they're just like, all right, I'm going to do this just because. Well, at least it's with a machine. <laughs> yeah, they don't even need to do it. They just laugh at everybody's reactions. <laughs> yep. At least it's with a machine, though. Imagine, like, the old days. Like, if you had to, like, have somebody, like, blow in your eye. <laughs> they didn't... How would they measure if you have glaucoma or not, then? <laughs> do you feel the glaucoma yet? <laughs> yep, glaucoma. <laughs> the big deception is is that the blowing in the eye has actually never indicated to them whether you have glaucoma. They've always done it as a joke. Since the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best kept secret Bill ever. Glaucoma back in the 1860s was like, here, I'm going to help you out. This is and real news. just laughed about sure. it. Yeah. <laughs> they have a convention every year where they watch all the best reactions. Yeah, they watch the, <laughs> they watch the real. 1860s. Hey, Francis, ready? watch this. It never gets old. <laughs> oh, they give out awards and stuff. <laughs> This is awesome, Chad. Great job. Am I the last one? I don't, I don't know. even know what the question is. No, was. I don't think Patrick answered. Pencil. Ketchup. I really don't know what the question even is now. What is happening? Those what, both what past is, questions. What is happening? Ronnie already answered. Backwards. Mark I answered. answered. I answered first. You sir. did? Where are you? So. Do I need to get you into a doctor for <laughs> Alzheimer's test or something? Yes, please. I have dementia. Jeez. Early <laughs> no, onset guy, dementia. Now you're like waiting on me. This is what happens when you don't treat right. a quick fire like let's, a quick let's, fire. Let's listen back to what Patrick said three minutes ago. Contacts during the day, glasses at night. Oh, that's right, because your answer wasn't a real answer. It was both, which is the cop-out. Mm-hmm. Yep, uh-huh. I'm copping out. Fantastic. I'm going to go with glasses because I'm with Mark. Contacts are very uncomfortable. 
Bonus, TP roll, over or under? This is a no-brainer. Over. I agree. Over. 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 It's on the original patent for it. Speaking of over, this Fackler's frenzy is over. <laughs> I love you, Chad. at a whopping God. 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Is that our longest? <laughs> oh, for sure, by four minutes. 11 minutes was last week's. All righty. With that, Mark, why don't you lead the way with what's new news in your life? Ketchup. Such. Ketchup. <laughs> Love beer. What's going on, Mark? How, how has life been going these past four, five, six days, however long it's been? I life has been take out the last 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> start right here. Well, you know, that's 15 minutes of my life I'll never get back and... You know, <laughs> um, no, life has been good, um, but life has been kind of slow. Nothing like huge going on. Um, Friday night was our, our typical, you know, La Caretta Mexican food night with uh, with my in-laws, which is awesome. It's awesome as usual. Um, Saturday actually took my parents out. Well, my wife and I did. We took our parents, my parents out uh for my stepmom's birthday, um, so we took her took them out for lunch. Um, we went to this place. Um, it's called Corner Burger. Corner Burger is kind of like a, um, you know, it's a, obviously a burger joint, but with like all natural foods, like you know, your grass fed meat and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Handcrafted burgers. Yeah, because Patties. that's that's a lot of pretty much what my parents eat they try to go as natural as possible so whenever um whenever we go out to lunch it's usually at corner burger um so and that was great as usual the food is definitely good there um and so sunday um finally got back to normal with uh with my church schedule because we hadn't had a youth group in like a month or so because uh a couple of our youth group students they were in a play uh, which i told you guys about in a previous episode Mm -hmm. um and because of that and they had all these practices and tech rehearsals and stuff like that um our our attendance kind of dropped and and so we really didn't have a normal youth group until uh sunday so it was good to get back in the groove with that. Um, got to play um, some Fibbage, which if you're not familiar with that, it's part of the uh, Jackbox Party Pack collection of games. Mm-hmm. That's um, good stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to play uh, with the kids. But big word of advice, and I should follow my own advice because this has happened to me before, never play the non-family friendly version of it at oh, church. Geez. That is <laughs> correct. <laughs> Either um, there are awkward questions or you can fill in awkward answers. A little bit of both. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, one of the options, um, well, you know what? I'm just, I'm not even going to go into it on here. <laughs> um, it was just not very appropriate for church. So, but that was my fault. Fo- I totally forgot that um, I didn't have the, I had brought my, my Xbox with me. And I totally forgot that the family-friendly version that I have is not on my Xbox. It's on my PS4. That's um, why you should always go with PS4. Yeah. Don't go with Xbox. Well, um, so I just need to remember that from now on. Um, Wait, so the PS4 has family-friendly and the Xbox is not? No, I just I I just have the the versions of the Jackbox Party Pack. That has the fam- family friendly feature on the PS4. I have all the older ones on my Xbox. That don't have the f- that feature? That don't have that feature. Yeah. So on the gaming front, uh had a lot of time playing Apex Legends. Uh got some more wins with uh with Sheldor from the community. Um so I've been enjoying that. Pretty excited for tomorrow as the uh, the Season 1 Battle Pass comes out. Um, and also the brand new uh, character for the game comes out. So I'm pretty pumped for that. I'm going to be getting 
both of those things. I'm in the um, dark on such things. Who who's the who's the character? Um, the new character's name is Octane. Um, basically, I I don't remember what his other. He, he, each character has like three abilities. Um, it's like a, a passive ability, um, an active ability, and then your ultimate ability. Um, I know I don't know if it's his ultimate ability or not, but one of his abilities is he can toss out a jump pad, a launch pad to where you can propel yourself up to, mm -hmm. to, you know, different areas. Um, and they've kind of been play testing that in the game just to see how it worked before they actually put the character out. Um, but I'm excited to have a new character and plus with the battle pass, you get like all new skins and, um, you know, XP boosts and all sorts of stuff. And so I'm excited to see what they're going to do with it for sure. Um, and that is pretty much my week in a nutshell. And I wasn't very huge of a week. So, uh, Ronnie, how was your week, sir? Um, fairly boring. I did two things of interest and they were both watching movies mm -hmm. so i watched two movies mm -hmm. this week i look i look forward mm -hmm. to hearing what two movies they were do you if, do you look forward to I, it i do but i don't i'm <laughs> i'm like part of me w wants one of the the titles of the movies to rhyme with ooper pam ooper tan well it might but the first movie was captain marvel mm -hmm. so we went to theater hey! and saw it. nice Hello. I really, I really liked it. Um, I thought it was really good. I was kind of surprised actually because I, I read a couple of reviews that said that it really wasn't like that great, and I thought it was really good. Good, so, cool. Nice. Do you have a Do you have a rating for it? Eight, uh, eight out of ten. Uh, eight out of ten spaceships. Okay. All right. Cool. Nice. Eight out of ten. That's a good score. Did you stay yeah, for the pretty... credits? I did. Nice. I did. I did not make an announcement, uh, Mark, but I did stay. <laughs> I mean, that's that's my personal thing. You do what you want to do. You do you, sir. Yeah, actually, I was surprised because I think only like three or four people even walked out of the movie. Like everybody was sitting waiting for the credits. Everybody's conditioned. Like, even if I didn't know there was some, I'd be like, all right, why is everybody still in here? <laughs> it really should be standard practice at this point if it's a Marvel movie. Just to... right. Yeah, I it, I think it. I think it's. Uh, I think it's getting there. Yeah, actually, unfortunately, yeah. like a lot of in my area, a lot of people do end up walking out, which is why I feel compelled to say, stay, please, there's more. But um, <laughs> that's good that you didn't have a whole lot of people walk out for sure. Yeah, nobody, I mean, barely anybody walked out. And I will say one thing in this movie, which is like the worst case scenario is... So it's uh, it's one of those movie theaters where they will like serve you food and everything. So it's a really nice like theater. You can like get dinner there and everything. Mm, yeah. And in the row behind us, the server basically lost control of a drink and spilled it all over these people. No. Oh, no. It was like oh, before goodness. the movie had even started. Oh jeez. So they had, they had to sit in it for most of the time. They just had to take it. Like it was it was bad. Like, you could hear him, like, losing control of the drink. It was one of those oh. scenarios where he tries to catch it, like, three or four times on the way down, and it just flies all over everybody. Like <laughs> oh, that's so thing. bad. Oh. I was in an Italian it restaurant was. once when a guy held up a uh, a bottle of wine on a tray too high in the air, and the fan that was in the, the room <laughs> oh, goodness. chopped off the top oh, of the wine, and wine went everywhere. It was crazy. Oh, man. I, was it red wine? Uh-huh. Red oh, wine. Oh, Pure gross. red wine. Red, and I saw I saw it happen in like slow motion. It was crazy. <laughs> I've seen like waiters spill stuff like you know on tables and stuff and get on people, but like, oh man, I thought, I thought like, God, I'm lucky I sat in this row. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> one row up. Um, but no, the movie was really good. Uh, the theater that place is really cool. Um, the second movie that I watched was. Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. Nice, oh, nice. Yeah, I like that. Really killing this. Yeah. Uh, two Marvel resolution here. By the two way, two Marvel awesome. movies in a week, man. You're on a roll. Tearing it up. Keep it up. I am. On, I am on a roll. Let's do three next week. Um, 
No, I watched the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, and uh, I I loved it. Like I loved the comedy in that movie. Like it was phenomenal. But uh, yeah, like I'm really looking forward to watching two and three now because of the first one. Like I love the brand of comedy. Like the whole movie starts off, and like Chris Pratt is just. Uh, he puts on headphones and he's just dancing just around. Jamming. He's like singing into the rat. And yeah, stuff he picks up. <laughs> it's awesome. Like, it's awesome. It's so like, funny. It's an awesome. Um, well, I shouldn't say the movie started off that way. The way the movie started off, I was not prepared for. Nobody told me about his mother at the beginning. Oh of the yeah, movie. yeah. Did not. I was not ready for that. I was like, spoilers. Oh, I was like, Whoa. Starts out real serious. <laughs> I'm ready to laugh, and this is like the most serious intro to a movie like, ever. Oh no. I'm not yeah. in love. Uh, but it was really cool. It was really cool how they like referenced that back like like partway through the movie and everything. So wait to yeah. volume two, uh, my friend. Wait to volume two. Yeah, I am actually I'm pumped for that. You I'm, should. Be. I think I'm gonna go back and w- probably watch the first one again. Um, just like you know, it's one of those movies where there's a lot of stuff happening and you always like miss little things. Oh yeah. Oh so yeah. For sure. I might go back and like watch that one more time and then. Yeah, because half the time, um, every one of the Guardians of the Galaxy, once they're all together, they're all making jokes simultaneously, or like exactly, one is making exactly a joke right. while the other is doing something stupid, while the other is playing off of the joke. Like it's it's very complex yeah. comedy. I love it. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's like the, that that movie. Like, so the comedy in it is like really awkward comedy. Like they're having like they're in the middle of like a serious speech. You know, when they're all like deciding to go together and and the raccoon's last and he stands up he's like ah, i'll stand now i guess because we're all standing it's just like a serious moment yeah. and he just totally ruins it yeah pretty much <laughs> but no that was uh that was a good one or like <laughs> like he's saying what all he needs to break out of the prison and he says that guy's leg Get that guy's leg <laughs> i love that part and he's like oh you actually got it <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, I just thought it would be funny. Was it funny? <laughs> what, what was the look on his face? <laughs> yeah. And then later on in the movie, he's like, I'm going to need that guy's eye. And he's like, no, no, he doesn't. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it was it was really good. I enjoyed that one. Um, I will definitely try and watch that one again and get on with the other ones. But I think that was the, mo- that was the Marvel movie that I was the most excited about. Because like, my only reference was Infinity Wars. And like them and Infinity Wars, like they were hilarious, just the dynamic between their group or whatever. So um I was most excited to watch that one. So cool. I'm glad I got that one out of the way. It was really good. But that was really it for me for the week. I just watched two movies. I didn't watch Superman. I mean I was busy with other movies this week. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have time to squeeze it in. Sure. It happens. Patrick, how was your week? My week? Uh, I did. Yeah, just hurry up and tell us before Lucas continually grills me about Superman. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll come back. <laughs> Be back next week. So I did only two things this past week. I had uh, dance practice and played Resident Evil Two, and that's it. So you, that's all I did. You were using them jazz hands, dancing around. Awesome. Yep. What kind of dancing did you do? My daughter, she's got dance, and she does a couple classes. She does jazz, and she does hip-hop. And every year um, at the recital, there is a family dance, like during intermission and at the end of the recital. And this family dance is where dads, moms, significant others, and caretakers uh, can get up there and dance with their children. So this year, you know, I've been doing it for three years, and this year... um, the, everyone has a theme. Uh, this year is like more of like um, like high energy dance, and Claire and I get to dance to the "Shut Up and Dance" song. Uh, I don't. How is that Bruno nice. Mars? I don't know who that is. I'm not the music man. Mark. Who Freddie is that? Mercury. Yep. Okay, we're dancing to Freddie Mercury's "Shut Up and Dance" song. That's not correct at all. <laughs> I, thought that was, I thought that was Clapton. <laughs> That's that's walk the moon. We're going with like planets and moons now. Okay. Saturn. So you're you're talking about that song now. Don't you dare look back. Just keep your yeah. eyes on me. Yeah, that's walk the moon. <laughs> well, that's Patrick. by walk the moon. Yes, that is the name of the band. Walk the moon. Oh, what? Okay. What's the name of the song? <laughs> Don't Samsonite. even know that. Samsonite. That was <laughs> way off. <laughs> 
I enjoy the song, and that's about it. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, we uh, we having like I think like five or six practices, and uh, we will perform during her recital. Please so, have yeah. please have Mel record that and post it on our Discord. Yes, please. I will not. And I'm sure there's no way we'll post it on social media like Twitter or anything. We promise. No way, because that's the way the internet works. I, you find I, something I, and then you post it. T- retweet it. It's on there yeah. forever. That's how the internet works. But yeah, uh, so I've been playing Resident Evil 2. Uh, there's uh, two storylines. Uh, one with Claire Redfield, one with Leon Kennedy. I beat the one with Claire, and I'm on the one with uh, with Leon, so... I'm um, hoping to have that done by the end of this week because I've been detoxing from Apex Legends and Overwatch. I have not played that in a week, uh, so I could play Resident Evil. So mm-hmm. I've been working on that. Now, have you told your daughter that one of the protagonists in Resident Evil is named after her, or she's named no, after she... one of the protagonists? Nope. <laughs> no, she not at all. Right? Or learn about Resident Evil? <laughs> yeah. No way. No way, Jose. It's probably it's probably a good call, Dad. Yep. What about you, Lucas? What is going so, on with your life? Uh, lots and lots of lots and lots of fun has been going on. Uh, you would think it's been a whole week since we recorded last, but it's only been skip the seven five days since we recorded. Um, but uh, let's see. This past week, my family and I finished reading the Chronicles of Narnia, all seven books. And so how do you read that? Do you read it out loud and like in, circle in English? And we uh, in English, my, okay, with subtitles. My, my, yeah, we we read the book with subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> so I read, and then Mindy translates for the kids, since my son is Brazilian, uh, and he he only understands Brazilian. No, just kidding. Uh, pretty much how that works is just every night uh, before bed, probably twenty minutes, twenty five minutes before bed, uh, my wife and I take turns reading a chapter. Uh, we used to do half a chapter, but then you'd like get halfway through the, through the chapter, and then the next day you would continue where you left off. And of course, my son, when we he was five when we started, and he would always be like, "Who's that? What's happening? I don't know what we're doing right now." Pretty much, and so we realized that we needed to stick it stick to a whole chapter. So usually about twenty five thirty minutes, we'd read a chapter a night. And uh, the Chronicles of Narnia has seven books, and I have to say that it was really it was really cool to do. Patrick uh, and any other parents out there listening, even Mark, you can do this with Cisco. Uh, please read <laughs> through the Chronicles of Narnia, uh, these seven books with your kids. It's a beautiful, meaningful experience. Um, it has a lot of imagination. And even more now as, a, as an adult, you know, I read them when I was, I think in middle school I read them. But, but as an adult and as a dad, um, it just... The, the symbolism and everything that happens in the books just makes much more sense. And uh, it's it's just a really cool time to have like teaching moments and and just instill imagination in the lives of your kids. So I recommend it. From there, we've picked up the books, the book series called A Little House on the Prairie. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. What? Little House on a Prairie. Little House on the Prairie. Yeah. With the story of Laura Ingalls. Have you guys not heard of that? I have heard of that. Thank you, Mark. I've heard of the, is, that the, is that the TV show? <clears throat> so it 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 was a TV show based on the books, oh, written okay. by a woman who uh, wrote a series of books about her childhood up into adulthood from the mid to late 1800s. Um, I had no idea it was based on a true story. It's I always thought a Little House on the Prairie was just like a fictitious uh, about people moving through the u.s and pioneers and and you know that pioneer living life um but it's it's pretty much a true story and it's quite descriptive in the first chapter they they talk about butchering a pig and they give details everything from the kids being excited to cut off the tail and fry the tail over a fire and eat it uh to making head cheese uh from the pig's head and I was not prepared for this. <laughs> when, <laughs> when, uh, anyone's prepared when, for this. <laughs> my wife starts reading it. Now, this is, this is a book series that my wife read when she was in third or fourth grade. 
And she was so excited. She is so excited to share this with her kids and read through it. And it actually, we read the second chapter tonight. And overall, it's very interesting. And my kids are really into what's happening. Like, it's all based on, like, reality. Like, growing up in a, in a cottage in the woods. It starts out, I think, in Wisconsin. And this family of five, a husband, a wife, and uh, three daughters, um, it talks about the day-to-day life of pioneers where, you know, they have to stock up for winter, they have to go hunting, they have to defend themselves from wolves and bears, um, they have to protect their their prized pig until they butcher it one day, like all this stuff happens, this is just in the first two chapters, and uh, it's a, it's like a, it's actually like a 30 or 40 book series, but we only have, what? Eight, we only have eight books, so we're going to read the eight books we have. And I don't think we're going to read any more than that. But uh, we're going to read like the first seven books. And then there's like a a random book 31 that we may or may not read. Uh, But we're going through that with the kids. So we'll see what happens. So you're going to read the first seven books and then just jump to 31? Why? Yeah, man. Spark notes. We have the book, so we might as well read it. You won't know what's going on. We'll make up a story. We'll fill in the gaps. (laughs) Okay. It's like every other person they introduce, we're going to be like, who is this person? And I'm just going to be like, oh, it's their uncle from another mother. I don't know how that works, but... What? Yeah. I don't know how family works. But anyways, so uh, another cool thing that we did is my family and I watched Lego Movie Part 2. And man, it was excellent. Uh, you guys, Have you guys watched Part 2 of Lego Movie? No. Not yet. Nope. Have you watched part one or the first Lego yeah. movie? Yes. Part one was awesome. Nope. Yeah, part one was awesome, and part two just continued from there. It was really good. It has a, those those Lego movies have a lot of heart and a, definitely a lot of comedy. Ronnie, the comedy actually reminds me a lot of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy style comedy. So even if you're oh, really? yeah, even if you're not you know huge into animated stuff, uh, Lego movie is pretty fun movie just to watch. Because they make a lot of. I played like the Lego games and stuff before, and like I feel like that comedy is in like the little cutscenes. Uh, like, yeah, but it's comedy. a little more geared towards children. I would say that the Lego movies are it's pretty geared towards every age. Like they make a lot of jokes really? that go over kids' heads, but but adults understand or you know grown ups and stuff. So uh, they're really good. Uh, I I personally connected connected more with the first Lego movie just because it 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 hit more on the parent child dynamic. This one hit more on siblings, uh, but if you have siblings or whatever, it still uh, is really good, and it has a lot of heart to it. So I would give it four and a half out of five Duplo blocks covered in glitter. And if you've seen the movies, you understand why it's covered in glitter. So that is that on Lego Movie Part 2. Definitely or the Craggle. Recommended. No, that's Part 1 is the Craggle. Spoilers, Craggle's not in Part 2. Sorry to disappoint. Uh, in terms of week, <laughs> this week's <laughs> work, um, I have been working from home today, but last week I did have three days of subbing, and I made sure not to hurt the children with the dad jokes I threw at them or the whole heap of amount of work that their teachers gave them. I was just the messenger, but I had to give some kids a lot of work, and they were not happy. Uh, but during that time, uh, while they were working or not working, uh, I did get to chat with some Uh, eighth graders about Fortnite, which I know nothing about, and Overwatch. So that was fun. At one point in our conversations, we started like calling out different eighth graders and saying who they would be in the Overwatch, uh, the Overwatch lore. Like there was one kid that I just kind of looked at him for a moment. I was like, you would totally be Junkrat. And he started even laughing like Junkrat when I said that. And then the next day... Uh, uh I said, your name is no longer Junkrat, you are Rugrat, because his last name is Rug. And so I changed it, and it, it stuck, like, and just started calling him Rugrat the, the other two days. And he went with it. He was cool with it. And that, But <laughs> it just was the running joke to kind of just call out who people were, whether they were Genji, Warthog. Warthog? No, that's not right. That's Halo. What's, what's the big fat hog guy's name? Roadhog. Roadhog. Yes. So Roadhouse, it was cool, and even it's yeah, Roadhouse, real close. Uh, and then at some point, kids started talking about Sony versus Microsoft, and of course, I told them about all the reasons that PlayStation rules, and I won the conversation. So it was a good time. 
No, I'm just kidding. I didn't win anything, but it was funny just to talk to them about it. Um, other than that, uh, uh, right now I'm sitting pretty at 14 games completed for the year. I have about eight plats or 100%. I did finish um, another game uh, today, actually, in my on my cheat day. I completed a game called Broken Sword 5. It is like a point-and-click adventure that has a story similar to the Da Vinci Code. Dan Brown's kind of mystery uh, mix of biblical and other different story elements. So I finished that up today. That was that was okay. I used a guide because sometimes you just don't know that you're supposed to combine a paperclip with gum and then combine that with a cockroach so that it can go and reconnect electrical stuff. It's crazy. Sounds more like MacGyver. Like MacGyver? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, have you guys have you guys ever played point and click adventure games? A little bit, I guess. I pl- yeah, I played Broken Sword before. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So the idea is, you just you, if you haven't played it, for those of you out there that haven't played it, real quick, all you do is you find random items in the world, and you kind of like you have a story that you're following, but eventually to get to the next area, you just have to take the random stuff you pick up and combine it, and sometimes it combines into something useful. Sometimes it doesn't, and then you have to apply it to different areas in the environment, and then it works. Like at one point in the game, I had to literally put a gum-covered paperclip on top of a cockroach and put it into an electrical box so it could crawl to where I put some cookies so that it would... (laughs) What the heck is this game? I know. It was so crazy. I was like, there's no way I would figure this out on my own, but uh, I had the little help of a guide to get myself through it and get that 100% and get all them trophies. So it was a good time. Uh, But this Friday, there's going to be a premiere of Mr. Pastor Ham's Neighborhood, and it will be airing on Twitch for the first time this Friday, March 22nd, probably from around 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until the sun goes down somewhere. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's an all-day crazy stream with your very own... Lucas Ham Swisher and I cannot cannot make any promises of how exciting or boring or interesting it will be, but you guys will be joining me for my day's errands, work, gaming with others online. I'll probably try to join uh, uh, Ed Placencia and No Work Fridays uh, as long as they play a game I have. They'll probably be playing Division 2, which will be my lu- just my luck. Um, I'll be going to the market, probably going to the bank. Uh, it should be a good fun uh, unless I decide to take a nap. Or work too much, which probably won't be the case. But I like the idea of there being like a thirty-minute power nap. <laughs> yeah, just like sitting there <laughs> and I'll just face the screen on my face while I'm taking a nap. It's gonna be very much like the Truman Show, but we're gonna be we're gonna be going with the uh, Mister Rogers neighborhood theme. And uh, I do want to thank the guys for helping me come up with this little challenge, this little uh, crazy thing that I'm doing. How about that call, call back to Mr. Rogers neighborhood? Did you guys love that classic TV show back in the day? Mm-hmm. I did not. You didn't I like just... it or you didn't watch it? Uh, neither. <laughs> what Ronnie? That's Whoa. Sad. Easy. You can't, you can't judge a Rogers by its oh. cover. If you're not going to watch Lucas it, you side. can't say you don't like it. The only person that's judging here is you judging me for not liking it. Uh, I don't I'm think so. I'm not judging Man. Mr. Rogers. I'm just saying that his show wasn't good. Well, that's kind of judging him, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you did it first, buddy. Maybe it's not his fault. <laughs> Maybe it's not his fault. <laughs> He's accidentally being judged. Oh, jeez. Lucas, all I'm saying is you better have plenty of cardigans ready, and you need to like sit down and change your shoes. Well, you just have to change your shoes. Yeah, I hope I see some of that. You have to, you have <laughs> to take, tune I'll in and take see. it off on Friday so I can tune in <laughs> all day. So all I can day, watch baby. all day. <laughs> <laughs> We're making popcorn and watching him change his loafers with tassels. We should have prepared for this more, Patrick. We could have both taken the day off and streamed it at my house <laughs> all day. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. But yeah, I'm doing it. You're doing I'm gonna it. I'm going to go in tomorrow and be like, all right. I'm talking to my boss like, hey, I got to take Friday off. <laughs> oh, what's going on? I'm watching a guy uh, do nothing. <laughs> and it's going to be nap, epic. Change his shoes. Wear sweater vests. Uh huh. No, he didn't wear sweater vests, did he? No, I don't think so. He wore uh, no, cardigans, just cardigans, right? Cardigans and yeah, uh, house cardigans. slippers. Which you'll have to wait and see on Friday if I have those to change into. 
Ooh, we model some uh, socks with sandals. I can't say. You just gotta <laughs> is, wait. Is there gonna be requests? Oh, that's totally <laughs> happening. Oh. <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny. Which means it's happening. Oh. But I can confirm that Patrick made a sweet graphic that I will be posting soon. I, by the time you've listened to this, I will have already posted. And pro- for some of you, you will be listening to this, and I will have already done the Twitch stream on Discord. Or not on Discord, on uh, Twitch. Twitch stream on Twitch. Uh, but, anywho, speaking of a classic TV show like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, that is our topic this week. The old boob tube and the TV shows that we have watched and watch now that shape us and have made us the Netflix and DVR and people we are today. So, let's get to it, shall we? <laughs> That's one minute. of my favorite words. We cannot boob too. We cannot move on from this, can we? <laughs> We're gonna get an explicit tag on this episode now because you said boob. It's not like I said booby tube or anything. <laughs> it's not like I said booby tube or breast tube. Come on now, <laughs> keeping it real. <laughs> Does that one have to be edited? Nope. All right. All right. As always, I like to start at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. Not just when you first started watching TV. I think TV's always been around for all of us, right? I mean, despite me being the oldest, even I had TV from the beginning. Um, But, you know, starting from the very beginning when TV became a ritual, regular practice in our lives. And with that in mind, Travis Pospisil wants to know. Ooh. Did you just say his name right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. Edit that out. Let me say it wrong like I usually do. Traffic popsicle said (laughs) you know he's not editing that out right (laughs) yeah i know uh travis had this to say what was your favorite cartoon on saturday mornings tom and jerry was probably my all-time favorite but saturday morning it had to be super friends the justice league cartoon after cartoons were over there were monster movies the old black and white ones followed up by pro bowling those were sp- oh pro bowling oh my goodness I remember that <laughs> oh, oh man I do not remember that those were special to me Travis said because oh, I enjoyed those throwback he said he enjoyed those with his grandpa good old pro bowling wow oh my gosh wow can't say I ever man, watched that the pro back bowling so many memories <laughs> pro bowling with grandpa so uh, what kind of Saturday morning cartoons do you guys have. Uh, that you loved and adored back in the day was Animaniacs. Was that Saturday morning cartoons? I believe at one point. I believe it was, at one was point it was. Yeah, it was on you mean afternoon? <laughs> <laughs> Those were after yeah, school, Animaniacs. also. But I can Man. see them being Saturday morning, also. Yeah, I think those are blended together for me as a Saturday morning and afternoon cartoons. I have a lot I of think those. They did both. Yeah, like what about Nickelodeon? Like, I had a lot of Nickelodeon ones that I loved. Like, like Snick. Snick. Yeah. Like Ren and Stimpy. Ren and Stimpy. Doug. Rugrats. Uh, Clarissa Explains It All. That's oh, not a sure. cartoon. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but that might have been a Saturday morning show. Hey Arnold was one of them. For yeah, me. Hey Arnold. Hey Arnold. Uh, yeah. Did you guys uh, did you guys watch Ro- uh, was it Rocket Power? When they're all skateboarders? That was a good one. I didn't watch that A little that bit. One. No, I don't remember that one. We are you guys ever watch that show Angry Beavers? I've seen that as well, yeah. That was one of my favorites. I also missed that one, but I was looking at Nickelodeon cartoons today, and I saw the Angry Beavers like logo, and I was like, I have no idea what this is. How did I miss this? My all-time favorite Saturday morning cartoon was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and yeah. X-Men. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, those are my favorites. I think for, I think for me, uh, Saturday morning cartoons, Pokemon was definitely one of them. Um, a lot watch a lot of uh, Batman the animated series, which that'll be coming up a little bit. Spoilers. Um, yeah. Um, and later on, Kids WB actually had um, Batman Beyond. 
if you've ever heard of that show. Yeah. It's, yeah. Good one. It was really good. Futuristic um, Batman. Yes. I know. I didn't actually um, watch that very much. I was a Batman the Animated Series guy, though, but I'll save that talk for later, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched the cartoon Spider-Man, the 90s one. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. It was awesome. Forgot about that one. Did you did you guys hear that uh, next year they're bringing back Animaniacs? Mm-mm. I did hear that. Yep. I don't know. Is it the original cast or is it just all new? Because I know that one guy who did the uh, all the countries in the world, um, he still does that, and he's added all the countries that have changed names and so forth. Um, I wonder if he's going to be a part of it. I'm not sure. They would have to, right? I can't see how they I could be so, like, right? let's bring it back and have none of the same voices from before. But if there's Pinky and the Brain coming oh, back, yeah. oh my god, Pinky gosh. and the Brain, yes. Pinky well, and the Brain. Sadly, there's precedent for bringing shows back and not having the original voice cast. So I would not put it past them to to not do that. Well, I don't watch those shows. Then they, there you go, they're vetoed, <laughs> vetoed, my boycott. friend, boycott it, fake shows. All right, fantastic. Well, I think we can all agree that Saturday mornings were awesome. It's really sad that our kids are growing up in a day and age where they can just make Saturday morning happen anytime, and that almost takes away from the specialness of yeah, Saturday morning. Does. It's just like, well, I can just do it right now. I'd, sometimes I've been tempted to, to just be like, no, we're not watching this till Saturday morning. You can go, you can go <laughs> wash the dishes, punks. Ooh. punks. Oh, wait, that reminds me. <laughs> I totally forgot. Segway. Into my kids washing dishes, I got a new dishwasher, and I totally forgot to mention that. I saw the pictures. Yeah, I posted it on awesome. Discord. Yeah, it is a full sized dishwasher, like double the size I had before. Oh, I could, whoa! I didn't know that. I could put nice. I could put pie dishes in it, and 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 cake dishes. Cake? No, I don't do cake dishes. Ketchup bottles, and ketchup packets or two. <laughs> no, but seriously, I the guy that came to fix the old one that broke, he said it was going to cost like three hundred hay ice to fix it you don't need to know how that? much that is 300 hay 300 ice. what 300 hay ice it's pieces of ice yep pieces of ice and uh hay ice hey like. ice <laughs> yeah you just get some ice in your hand you're like hey and then you point at it that's the currency <laughs> this is how much you need i can get that you're but, always excited for it hey ice yeah but you gotta you gotta pay it before it melts because then it becomes hay water but i'm okay so I found out this motor was going to cost $300, we'll say. And uh, it was no guarantee that the dishwasher was going to last. And then my wife and I got on the Brazilian eBay called Oshi or something. I don't remember what it's called, but it's Brazilian eBay. And yep. we found a dishwasher twice the price, only a couple years old. This dishwasher we had before was at least 15 years old, at least. So twice the price, you mean it's... Six hundred dollars? No, no, no. It wasn't twice the price. It was six hundred pesos. <laughs> six hundred pesos. Yes. <laughs> no, we found a we found a dishwasher of twice the size and half the life, if not a third of the life, for less than three hundred hay ice or three hundred dollars. I got it super cheap, and it's better than what we had. And I don't awesome. have to just get a motor and not guarantee anything. This one is like good to go, and it hums like a kitten. And it doesn't make lots of noise. It's awesome. Does a kitten hum? hum? <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> One's in Brazil, do. Sorry. It, yeah, in Brazil they hum. But I know in the U.S. I forgot. They do purr there. My bad. I forgot. So, so that so that one that, that sticks its head in your window? Yeah. It, does it hum at you? Okay. Yeah, he puts his head and he's like, hum. <laughs> no wonder you're scared of it. Yeah. You should hear what the cockroaches Cat's say. Cat's not supposed to do that. <laughs> All right, so carrying on, let's get right into the nitty gritty and get to our top shows of all time in no particular order. These are the shows that starting from when we first started watching shows and now into the present are the three of our favorites. They don't have to be one, two, three. They can be one, 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 two, two, two. If you do have a favorite, you can say it. Otherwise, let's talk about the shows because I don't know about you guys, but this got really difficult when I really was thinking about it. Yeah. Like I was like when I was preparing by myself, I was writing stuff down and thinking, I was like, cool. And then I talked about it with my wife and she started mentioning shows and I'm like, wait, stop it. You're confusing me. 
<laughs> I know you can have like 15, 30 honorable mentions <laughs> yeah, coming pretty, after the pretty your top much. three. You're, yeah, pretty much. So, uh, who wants to lead the way with one of their favorite shows of all time? I will lead the way. Lead it, my friend. And I'm going to say my number one show of all time. Bring it. Number one of all time. Yes. Is friends. Woo! I'll be there for you. I was exactly so glad you said that. Tell us why yeah, you love it. Uh, so um, it was. I started watching it during Must See TV on Thursday night, and it was like I think it was on at like eight o'clock, and yep. uh, then eight thirty rolled around. I think uh, there was like a, another show that that had come on. I can't remember, but um, who cares? Yeah, I, I love I love the 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 banter between all the friends. Um, I laugh every single episode. Like I've seen it for the first time, yeah. even though that I know uh, the joke is coming. Uh, and I know what's going to happen because I've seen it so many times. I still laugh to this day. Yeah. And what's funny is my wife and I have started to watch. I've said it previously, but we are watching the series all over again. Where are you guys at right now? That's, uh, we are, <laughs> we're only on episode seven. So we, of season my one. wife and I, yeah, <laughs> you need to speed yeah. it up a little bit, buddy. Well, <laughs> three years we, uh, later. Well, well, one of the big things uh, that my wife and I do whenever the kids are in bed and we want to wind down, you know, we turn we turn on the TV, and we watch a lot of TV shows. And whenever we have like, because we have Hulu, so we watch all of the shows. I don't know, we maybe have like four or five TV shows, and whenever there's not a new episode out. Um, we'll turn on Friends. So we have other shows that we like to watch, like during the um, during the season. And then I would say probably once uh, summer hits, when all the TV shows are done, uh, we will we will probably pretty much power through Friends. We we'll, we usually watch three episodes, probably three episodes a night. Yeah. Well, brother, I am right there with you because Friends is also it's my only number one. I didn't rate my other two shows, but Friends is head and shoulders above the rest it is my number one as well um my wife and i probably all together have watched all 10 seasons every episode along with the bloopers uh because we have them on dvd so i love those bloopers at the end of every season they they make me cry i laugh so hard um no one of the one of the great things about the dvds is there's scenes within episodes that are not on tv yep or on Netflix when it was on there. Oh, yeah, exactly. We right. started to watch so it on you... Netflix, and Mindy's like, I can't do this. They're, they're missing scenes. I, she she knew within a first episode, and she was like, nope, yeah. not doing it. Yep. Because we've watched every episode at least seven or eight times. Like, we've been through uh, yeah, it a lot. Same here. In our 14 years of marriage, it's like a, a yearly or every other year ritual. Uh, and right. I just wanted to shout out a, f- a few of my favorite episodes. Uh, the, run, the one where no one's ready, when Ross drinks wants to drink the fat. For Rachel, that's a good one. I love yep. that one. The one with Ross, Ross's sandwich, where he makes makes the moist maker, and then his boss oh. steals the sandwich, yeah, and he's like, "My yep. sandwich." <laughs> and then the one we've referenced many times, where Joey learns French. Um, yeah, all the holiday themed ones, like where Ross, uh, the one where Ross got high, and Rachel makes a terrible dessert, mixing an English trifle with meat and peas. And oh, Ross is, that is a good one. Ross is yeah. like, it tastes like feet. And Joey's like, I like it. What's not to like? <laughs> Custard, good. Jam, good. Meat, good. Meat, good. good. <laughs> and then my absolute favorite episode is the one with all the resolutions where Ross gets stuck in the bathroom and makes paste pants with uh, oh, baby powder pants. and lotion. Yeah. Good times. Uh-huh. Man, you didn't. I can't believe you didn't mention the one with the embryos. And uh, that one is the one where they, they do the, the game where they're oh yes for the apartment oh that is that a good one, one. Is my all-time favorite i knew you were going to say that one so i wanted to leave that one to you thank you yeah i appreciate it yep for sure all right so now that patrick and i have gone on about friends <laughs> let's give someone else a chance to speak <laughs> so ronnie or mark what show do you want to share with us i'll go do it um one of my all-time favorite shows is seinfeld yes the predecessor it of is... friends you know what's funny about like Friends and Seinfeld? I always really like shows that you don't like. You don't really have to like you know have watched the previous episodes. Like when it's on TV, you can just watch any episode. You know what I exactly. mean? Like, right. Instead of like like you know for a show that has like you know a whole storyline like behind every single episode, you can't. 
Yeah, you really can't just. Yeah, you know, once you, turn once it on you TV miss once you it. miss a season or miss like first few episodes, you're like lost totally. Yeah, right. but one thing I always liked about Seinfeld, and I like about Friends too. Like, I never watched Friends that often, but like this past like couple of years, like if it's on, like I'll sit and watch it. I mean, it's it's a good show. Um, but Seinfeld is one of those shows where you just you don't have to have watched anything previously because most of them are not related in any way. Right. Um, it's only within but, and the they're episode. They're always on. Like I feel like Seinfeld and Friends are always on. Yeah. Like one of the two is always on some channel, so you can always just flip over to it. Um, but some of my favorite Seinfeld episodes, um, the Soup Nazi episode, like that's that's a classic. That's good such one. a good yep. one. Um, I like the um, I like the one where Kramer gets the rooster, names it Little Jerry Seinfeld. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a really good one. And he's out there training it, like running down the sidewalk. And they're like, "Little Jerry just ran from here to there in four seconds." So, like, is that good? He's like, "I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that one. And um, I just watched one the other day, which was one of my favorites. So it's the one where Kramer sells his suit to Banya right off of him, and he's in that dressing room like the whole episode. <laughs> he's like yeah. trying to get people to bring him in clothes. He's got like Uma Thurman's number in the pocket of the jacket. <laughs> So he's trying to make a deal to get back out of there. Uh, but yeah, man, that show, that show cracks me up, dude. One of my favorite episodes of Seinfeld is the is later in the. I think it might have been season eight or something like that. It's the one with Kramerica Industries. Oh, I love that. And one. he gets assistant? his little intern. <laughs> so this name is like. It's also the Jared one where uh, it's the hello. Oh, yeah, that episode. That's that's a good one. I always appreciated I in Seinfeld how or something like that. I always appreciated how in Seinfeld they always connected all the random plot lines like in the end of most of the episodes, like whatever was happening with Kramer or was happening with Jerry and happening with Elaine, like they would somehow weave it together at the end to something outlandish or crazy. Uh, yeah. I really I thought yeah. that was really unique about the show to where they they made a lot of comedy out of that. I thought that was funny. I just think it's like it's like everyday situations that actually come up. Like they just magnify like those little bitty situations that are like funny in life. Yeah. And it's like it's funny because it's like it's a direct relation to like um like if you ever listen to Jerry Seinfeld stand up or um oh geez, what's the creator guy's name now? Curb your enthusiasm guy. Oh yeah. Larry David. Yeah, Larry David, like that's their comedy. Like like yep. that's like the that's why they're funny and their shows are funny. It's just like little bitty things that actually happen in life like, you know, the guy's a close talker, you know, or something like yeah. that. It's like somebody that's way too close. And we've all experienced like these little things that just makes it that much more funny. For I don't sure. think there's a day goes by where I don't think about a Seinfeld episode because of what's happening in my life. It's always a reference to Seinfeld and not that's not a not a knock on what friends does friends is good in its own right but everything that i do and everything that i've done um in life can be referenced in a seinfeld episode yeah what about you mark show you got for us so the first uh first tv show i'm going to talk about um is a little show called batman the animated series um i i just have a, a just a great fondness for this show watched it when i was a kid growing up um it started in 1992 it was kind of starting off the going off the coattails of of the 89 batman movie um and the success of that and um the the amazing thing about the show is like even though it was billed as a, a kid's cartoon like it was very serious um the the stories were incredibly deep um and and a lot of them very tragic um and just there's a lot of layers to it even though it was a kid show Mm -hmm. um and and so that really plays up the um you know how long it's how long it's lasted and and you know just rewatchability and all that kind of stuff um and i just anytime i can put on an episode now some episodes are not as good as others um but um Still, even the worst Batman episode is still a good, a decent episode to watch. Um, I can put an episode on of that anytime. So nice. So that's my first pick. Cool, man. A good first pick. Wash Ingram, uh, one of our Discord community members, wanted to chime in. Uh, she had this to say: "I'm all about those crime documentaries. I find them fascinating, trying to work out how these criminals' minds work." 
but I also love a many variety of shows. But my top three serious shows are Game of Thrones, Supernatural, and How to Get Away with Murder. My top three comedy shows are Friends, woo woo, How I Met Your Mother, and Father Ted. If you haven't seen Father Ted, I highly recommend it. It's an Irish show about dysfunctional priests. Interesting. Mm -hmm, <laughs> to say the least. That is interesting. Yeah. I've not seen it, so dysfunctional is that a crime priests. Show? Huh? <laughs> is that a crime show? You definitely I don't I don't think it's a crime Apparently, show. Apparently I'm not no. the only one that has <laughs> dementia or issues with listening. But didn't Patrick. she say she likes she's into crime shows? She said that at the beginning, and then she said later. My top three favorite comedy shows. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> comedy. Oh, yep. Yep. Uh, there it yep. was. I got the dementia too. Yeah. Got it. It's all good. <laughs> uh, so, what is the next show on your guys' list of top three TV shows? Well, my next one was Seinfeld, and we already talked about that. So, check. That was mine. Uh, my next one is The Office. The Office. Nice. I love good that choice. Show. I'm seeing yes. a theme. You love to laugh. Yeah, yeah, I I like to laugh and I like to just be able to like, I don't know. It's 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 kind of it kind of falls in the same category as like Friends and Seinfeld, where you can just really tune into any episode and just you know pick up watching without yeah, you know anything. My previous, dad. But... Oh, sorry. My my dad has started to watch The Office for the first. Oh, time. Oh, really? Yeah, he's in season two right now, and he is he's loving it. Like. Imagine going back and having love being to able to, to experience that. something like that for the first time. Yeah, that would be so That'd cool. Be amazing. Well, I have to say, I have to. I think that's a good moment. This is a good moment for me to confess. I've never completely watched any season of Seinfeld or The Office. Banned. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so. Well, I guess I'm banned too because I've never watched a complete season of. You should of watch shows. an episode of Seinfeld and an episode of The Office during your live stream. You think so? <laughs> They're right. only thirty-minute episodes. They're pretty quick. Challenge yeah. accepted. Can you, are, are you really able to live stream watching TV shows? Well, what I'll do is I'll point the camera on me while I'm watching it, and you guys get to awkwardly <laughs> watch me. <laughs> well, you they might flag the audio me. too. So never mind on this idea. <laughs> <laughs> How about I watch the episode, and while I'm reading the subtitles, I just make loud noises, or just every five seconds, just like <laughs> clap my hands or blah blah. blah. <laughs> So you can't That's hear it. Hilarious. Like, That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Silence. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll mute it, and I'll just read the subtitles. I'm like, guys, this is a good episode. I'm telling you what. <laughs> now, so I will tell you there's two episodes of The Office that are like two of my all-time favorites. The first one has got to be the fire drill one. I was just going like, to say that is the one that the few episodes I've watched and the one that has made me laugh so the hardest much. when he's this is the fire drill. Dude, that, <laughs> that episode is awesome. Yes. That, that whole fire drill it really is, is just hysterical. Oh. And then my next favorite episode is the episode where Daryl is leaving and they all have that like dance with him at the end of the episode. Mm. Have you seen this? They basically put on music and Daryl comes out and he like pops his collar and everything. And then he dances with everybody else in the office. Like, and it's just kind of <laughs> like his last hurrah. Hmm. And it is a good one. The only episode of the, well, I wouldn't say that. I've seen several episodes of The Office. But the episode of The Office, office excuse me, that I've seen the most. Um, and it's because like they always used to show it on like United Airlines flights. And when I was in college, my my stepmom worked for United Airlines. And so that's how I would get home. Because I basically got dirt cheap tickets. And so the episode that they would constantly play of The Office is the episode where they, um, where one of the characters gets like, she gets bitten by a squirrel <laughs> or something like that. And, and so they do this like walk for a cure for rabies. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I always appreciated the awkwardness of the comedy in the office <laughs> i mean i'm pretty sure the office has half of the gifts on the internet like when you type in <laughs> anything <laughs> office gifts are the most common ones that pop up <laughs> yeah they are have you seen the one where uh they're like michael dwight and jim are all sitting in an office and michael's reading all the comments like all the complaints from dwight and they're all about jim he's like i picked up my phone and hit myself in the face with it I don't know how, but I suspect Jim Halpert was behind this. <laughs> and then, then it cuts to like an interview with Jim, and he's like, 
It totally did. It took forever. He's like, I just kept putting dimes into his or nickels into his phone slowly over a period of time. Then I took them all out. <laughs> <laughs> so he hits himself in the face with his phone. Hilarious. <laughs> oh, that's so good. And one of one of the other complaints in there was everybody's been calling me Dwayne all day, and I'm not sure how. But I know Jim Halpert had something to do with this. And then it cuts back to Jim. He's like, yeah, totally was me. He's like, only cost me five bucks a person. He's like, totally worth it. (laughs) 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 Oh, man. Yeah, that that show always cracks me up. It's even funnier because it's like, like for me, like we work in an office. So like some of the stuff that goes on in there, like the inner office stuff is just, it's hilarious. You can connect to that. Did you guys ever watch the British, the original office? No, I never caught one of those. I never did either. I did not either. I know Ricky Gervais is in it, but that's all I know about it. I don't know anything else. Yeah, he's funny. Yeah, he's a funny guy. Pretty funny. Mark, what was your next one? Uh, Well, I guess my next one that I'll talk about a little bit is uh, The Flash, uh, which is uh, currently on television. No, the new one. Oh, man, the classic Um, one. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Although I have I have a small appreciation for the '90s Flash, yeah, um, yeah sure. Just like the '80s Hulk, I mean, you got to appreciate the predecessors yeah. that made it look ugly before they made it look nice later on. Well, the funny thing is, like, they actually acknowledged the '90s show on the current CW Flash. Yeah, um, they do. Which is which really is his funny. dad, right? And then, uh, yeah. well, his dad's on the show, um, but actually. And I don't, I don't know if this is a spoiler or not. It probably is. Know. Nope. Okay. You can, you can say it. Okay. Um, <laughs> so spoiler, <laughs> spoiler, <laughs> alert, alert. <laughs> so on the recent, like, uh, in recent years, they've done like major crossover episodes because they have all these shows like I can't, The Flash, I can't stand Arrow, those, by the Supergirl. Way. Just as a side route, I do not like the crossover episodes. Oh, those are my favorite. Good for you. Those are well, my favorite I'm episodes. Ignore you. This, <laughs> That's so. fine, <laughs> but it just doesn't make any sense to me. It makes perfect sense to How me. How does it not make sense? Because what if you're mean? not fully invested in watching all the other shows, it doesn't oh, make any th- sense. So the only f- show that I watch is The Flash. Yeah, and I will watch the rest of them because the, in those shows they kind of tell you what is going on. So it is. So you're not. You don't like. I don't watch Arrow. And I don't watch Supergirl. Yeah, I didn't watch. But they're in the crossover either. episodes, yeah. so it's as long as I'm watching the Flash, I kind of know, you know, eighty percent of what's going on. But like, what, what yeah. happened to me the first time they did a crossover is I had no idea. I also to get the get the resolution to what happens in the crossovers. Oh the Flash, yeah, you have, you to, have watch to watch an episode in the air in the Arrow in Arrow, and you have to watch. Sometimes you have to watch like three or four different shows to get the resolution to it, and I had no idea. And so we're just watching flash and the crossover happens and then like and then it's done unresolved and i'm like what is going on so i just never liked them because i didn't feel like oh fine yep that is (laughs) that is all on you i'm pretty sure (laughs) i crossover (laughs) event i'm pretty pretty sure i still wouldn't like it because it just i don't know i understand why they do it but i just don't care about some of the like i feel like you have to watch seasons and lots of episodes to get a vested interest in these characters and when they throw this drama at me about Supergirl's friend that is was from Grey's Anatomy. I don't care. Like I don't have any interest in what's happening in this girl's life. So when they put it in the crossover, it just well it just again hit your me. fault. Your fault um, exactly. I'm and I'll, mark on and I'll take it. But it's their fault for not hitting me in the feels with their characters. So continue, Mark. Well, Sorry, they to got me. That. So I'm glad they you're I'm glad fault. they got you. <laughs> your fault. <laughs> Um, no, but all that to say, um, they actually brought in the, uh, the nineties flash. Like they had, they got the original suit and, and every, or at least a mock-up of the suit. Um, so it's the Barry Allen from that show. Um, they had a multiverse crossover event, um, cause they've introduced, you know, the, the fact that there are multiple earths on the show that, you know, each one is different. Um, and so that particular multiverse's Barry Allen is the 90s Flash. Um, and so they brought him in for the crossover this season, which was really cool. Um, or at least in my opinion, it was really cool. Yeah, um, I think so too. <laughs> but I just, I love the show. I love how much they pull 
from the actual source material. Um, especially like the first season of the flash, man, that was mm. so good. The storyline with, with the reverse flash yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and they're even, they've got him in this season. Well, they've had him in several seasons, but. Um, no spoilers. I haven't watched in... this season yet, and I am watching it. So keep the current season spoilers to a minimum. Thank you. Okay. Because even My though bad. I hated it on the crossovers, I also like The Flash a lot, especially season one and two. Three was weak. Four was okay. But we still watch it because we're dedicated to it. But continue. Sure. Um, but yeah, it's just the most fun of all of the all of the cw shows and you know obviously you know i'm a huge time travel fan so there's a lot of elements of time travel in the flash Um, man he messes up time so yeah yeah i love the meme that they (laughs) that they have of like that's a nice timeline be a real shame if i messed it up (laughs) um (laughs) um but uh no it's just a great a great show and the story story writing is is great um i love all the characters obviously i named my dog after one of the characters um cisco is named after cisco ramon aka vibe on on the show (laughs) not that cisco um now that would be a crossover uh, (laughs) <laughs> Something, man. that's definitely a crossover i can get into right there i have a vested interest okay. in cisco the singer yep still your problem um <laughs> i'm not the only aggressive person on this show <laughs> it is gonna hate yeah i've uh my wife and i i think we started watching the flash at the end of season one we found that the way we like to watch it is we like to let the season kind of play out and then we like to binge it and just watch it all oh, all yeah. the way through i think i want to say it was season two or season three which one's the one with uh sartar satyrs savitar savitar thank you the <laughs> The, that's season three. That's season three. So Man, I'm I, so lost. I take it back. Season three, we love season three. Or we like struggled through the middle of season three. And then once like Savitar's identity is revealed and all that jazz, I won't spoil it. But once all that happens at the end, like I love season three. It was season four that we kind of, I guess that would be last year's season. Oh, with the thinker? Yes. I was not a big fan of the thinker. But uh, I really enjoyed, uh, my wife and I enjoyed binge watching the show's um, not watching them week to week, uh, but just like the shock of like just when they have you relax because they introduce a new monster for the week or new villain, and then all of a sudden they bring in something with Reverse Flash or something from the past or something from the future, someone from the future, and I just love those shock moments where you're just like, I have to watch the next episode. Uh, yep. I love I love those kind of those kind of shows. Uh, for me, that leads right into my second. Um, Second of my top three, and this might be a controversial one. Hold on, before we go any further. Sorry, go ahead. I still want to talk about Flash. Oh, okay. Sorry, continue. One of the, one of the biggest reasons why I watched Flash is because of Harrison Wells. Oh yeah, Harrison Wells. Every single season has to ha- has to is a different character. Yeah, which is mind boggling because I mean each well almost every season he has to be at least two characters. Yeah. And the one of the one of the uh, my favorite Harrison Wells versions was I think it was H W. Yep, where he's always walking around with drumsticks. Season three. Oh yeah. Oh, I, would, I totally yeah. miss that version of H of Harrison Wells. And man, was he not the best I mean, he, Harrison Wells at the end of season three? With I need what to, I need to rank my what Harrison he does. Wells. <laughs> Make a ranked Harrison Spoilers. Wells list. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, carry on. Fair enough. Yeah, no, I, I I agree with you there. He's definitely a, a definitely a stellar character, along with Cisco, Barry Allen, uh, uh, just most of the main characters. They all do a great job. Um, but yeah, so my second of my top three picks is also another show that has a week to week shocker that keeps you going. Um, but it's a controversial choice, and that is Lost. I love Lost from the beginning. Until the very end, I love it. Really, yes. I am. I know that my wife and I are one of the few that gets to the end of the finale, and it's just like we just love the 
the transition, like the first season, you think it's just like this real uh, grounded uh, TV show about people stranded on an island. And by the very end, it's like this ultra spiritual, ultra supernatural, like symbolic, you know, all the things that go into it and all the confusion that people have at the end. I, I think is clear as day and I love it. Like I just love the symbolism and, and I, I look forward to watching it again someday. Like, uh, I, I love lost the character development, the crazy weird stuff that happens. Um, the smoke monster, the hatch, like the, just, just all the stuff that happens. It's crazy. The flashbacks between the past and the present and the future. And then sometimes you don't know if it's in the past or in the present or the future. Like it is so convoluted. It's like the metal gear solid story of TV shows. Like it is just totally convoluted, totally all over the place. And I just like how it all fits together. Like I just, I loved it. Now the, the show lost is aptly named. Lost uh-huh. because it is. every single episode <laughs> you are absolutely lost about what's going on and they did that for how many seasons six seasons yeah. and i feel like like i loved lost when it first started because you're like oh my gosh what's happening second season oh my gosh what's happening and, and by the third the others... season i'm like oh my gosh i don't what care is happening no you're like so... oh my gosh what is happening <laughs> yes Exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, there's some there's some big moments uh, in in the in the series uh, that are really good, but there's like so many so many episodes where I'm like, really, did we really have to do this? Did it really have to happen? Do they have to go for four episodes? And what I didn't like about the about the series. Now I watched the entire series, and just because I was totally invested uh, after four seasons, like, okay, all right, well, I guess I gotta, I gotta watch through. it. You know, yeah. like my wife, she didn't, she, I think after season three, she stopped watching because she's like, she? she's like, I don't, th- there's no like resolution to any episode. Now, like, when, they you would guys, end- when you watched it, did you watch it like the old fashioned way or did you binge watch it? Like, did you watch it as it came out or did we you watched, watch well, it? Well, we watched it as it came out and we enjoyed the, like, uh, the discussion afterwards. Like, yeah. oh no, and I can see happen? that. Yeah. But in terms of understanding the story, I think the only reason I could understand the story is because my wife and I binge watched it over like two or three months. Like yeah. we watched all of them back to back. Like there were some days we watched like four episodes. And that's the best way to do it. Yeah, it really is. Because it all, it, it makes sense when you watch it really crunched together and you can process everything at the same time. Well, when yeah, we were I mean, having like, the conversations together and stuff, it was, it was they would ha- They would end an episode. You're like, oh my gosh, what is going to happen? And then they don't continue that storyline for like no, four episodes. They they leave it. And then it's like a... Every yeah. every episode was, was a cliffhanger. And yeah. you didn't find out what happened until four episodes later. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> at at least four episode. episodes later. Yeah. It's true. So. But yeah. Yeah. That's, that's my... That's, that's my next movie. Uh, movie. Movie, no. TV show. Thank you very much. Uh, Mike BC at life of Mike BC on Twitter, our bud. Uh, he said, my top three shows are number three, Star Trek, the next generation. Number two, Dr. Who. And number one, Babylon five. Babylon five was a show that I watched with my dad growing up. And now I've watched most of the series with my 15 year old, almost 16 year old son. One day I'll watch it with my six year old too. So, I can't say I didn't get much into Star Trek. I've never watched a Doctor Who episode, and I've never watched Babylon 5, but I've heard good things about all three of those, Mike, so thanks for sharing. Nice. Patrick, speaking of Doctor Who, how far have you gotten in this current season of Doctor Who? <laughs> oh, heat. <laughs> Two episodes. <laughs> I stopped. <laughs> it wasn't for me. It wasn't was it my the, kind of Was show. it the ear guy? Was it the ear guy that threw you off? I don't remember what was I can't remember the ear guy. You don't That's how much like, I remember of it. I remember you guys telling me about it. He'd like kill someone and then cut off their ears as like a trophy, and he had like yes. Oh, that's ears right. Or, oh, well, he yeah, took their I think teeth. That was a big turn off. He took like, their teeth actually. It was teeth, not ears. Teeth. Yeah, it was teeth. Oh, okay. Teeth. Oh wow. Okay. Yep. Anyways, anyway. Alzheimer's, dementia. All Alzheimer's. Wow, that's a great one. <laughs> you stopped before <laughs> one of the freaking best episodes of the season. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anywho, moving on. Let's get to our third of our top three shows. Patrick, you want to lead the way again? Or do you want to hold off on yours because yours is so amazing? 
No, I can go. All right, go for it. Let's. But it, it is also amazing. I bet it is. <laughs> and it is the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Oh my yeah, god! Buddy. The first three seasons of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. <gasps> I've watched the first three seasons of Power Rangers countless times. I think I've watched that more than Friends and more than Seinfeld. Patrick, I've watched and I've, watched, I've probably watched three episodes of one season, and I've pretty much watched the whole season because it's always the same. It is, but it's so <laughs> awesome! It's so awesome when they morph. Oh my gosh! Oh, so man. I That's and. Hilarious. and I was like, I think it was two two years ago. I rewatched the first three seasons again, and it is so cheesy, but it is like one of those shows for for me. I know for not for a lot of people that I still appreciate. I still appreciate the and it's it's they recycle everything. You know, it's like right. You know, they they start off as you know in 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 class or in school, then a monster appears, then they then they morph. They defeat it, and they're back yeah. in class, or they're back in school, or back at the juice bar. It's every single episode. It's, it's always like that, um, yeah. except for like very the rare like five episode arcs um, where the where they the Green Ranger comes. Oh, the intro or, to the Green Ranger. Or, that yeah, that, that is that episode hands arc down. hands down the best. It's best. it's so good, and um, I still I still love the Power Rangers. Um, not. Not necessarily uh, any of the other seasons because I think I watched maybe the I think the fourth season was Power Rangers Zeo, and I kind of fell off after the end of that season when they turned into Power Rangers Turbo. Uh, every season was different after that, but I, the reason why I love the first three seasons is because it's a, it's the it's the same same characters, almost the same characters, um, and once they get into Zeo and they go off Earth. Um, it's totally different. It gets really, really different. Um, and, it, and so I really fell off after that. I think I was, I was in maybe high school by the end of Zio. Um, so I think other things came up. I started doing baseball and basketball and doing all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, I kind of fell off of that, but then, um, a few years ago they came out with Power Rangers Mega Force. And Power Rangers Mega Force was was interesting because that entire series um, was bringing back all the old Power Rangers in each episode. Mm. Uh, so the Green Ranger was in it. They were bringing the Red Ranger back, and all the original cast members uh, from those ep- uh, seasons they would bring back. So that was cool. Um, but yeah, how many man. how many of these rewatchings of Power Rangers have actually involved your children with you? Or has this been uh, just by my, yourself? My, my daughter and I, we watched Megaforce together. Okay. Um, there was two seasons of Megaforce, so we watched those two together. She wasn't really into the original three seasons, which breaks breaks my heart because those are those hold a, a special place in my heart. Um, those are probably a little too nineties. I think for they were. Kids. You know, that's it's it's not like widescreen, beautiful colors and all that stuff. It was like very. Very generic back in the day, you know. Like you get punched in the chest, and there sparks fly off. I, I was mean, gonna say, <laughs> I was like, so you're saying with your daughter, no sparks well, I mean, were flying, still do right? That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Power Rangers, man, that's that is my that is my show. I love Power Rangers. There's a new fighting game for Power Rangers coming out next month, which I'm really excited yeah. for. Oh yeah, Power Rangers. Um, look out, Pat. First of all, you need to go and watch. Um, this not this newest season because they're on Beast Morphers now, I guess. Yeah, um, Beast but Morphers. But the past season, Gosh, yes. These names. Uh, <laughs> listen, ridiculous. listen again, kids show. Um, yes, but the As one before grown this, men talk about them with such passion. Kids show. Dino reminder. Thunder. Kids show. The, the one, <laughs> the one before <laughs> that is is Ninja Steel, and uh, they actually had because uh, they had was it the. 25th anniversary of power rangers yeah um they actually had another another huge special where like they had a whole bunch of rangers um on there um so definitely go look for that sweet Um, is that on netflix i think i I don't know if they've put it on netflix yet okay um but um and i don't know how that works with like licensing and stuff because um saban even though they have it in the name saban technically doesn't own power rangers anymore it's hasbro it's hasbro yeah 
Um, but um, so I but I don't know if they're gonna put these seasons on Netflix or not. But okay. um, yeah, I absolutely I agree with you on on Power Rangers holds a special place in my heart because you know it was one of the first shows that I really latched onto as a kid, and and I follow it because you know obviously I'm a nerd, so you know I don't I don't care what people think of me, <laughs> um, but. <laughs> Um, but, um, but I just, I love following the show to see where it goes. And because I have such a fondness, um, for the show, um, you know, the Green Ranger saga was incredible. Um, you know, obviously like, you know, I had Power Rangers everything when I was a kid. Uh, like you saw that picture of me, I posted not too long ago, I think, uh, in the discord, where I was in like a Red Ranger costume on Christmas, like I had yeah. Power Rangers everything. Awesome. Um, so yeah, I have a huge, huge fondness for Power Rangers for sure. Um, yeah, cool. Ronnie, I didn't care for Power Rangers. You're dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say one thing about Power Rangers, and I say this with all due respect. And I mean, oh, when someone says "oh, due all respect," due you know, respect. Kind of, you get, know something's coming. Get your get your face ready for the backhand. Here it comes. Here we go. My chest sucked. Why do you say that? Why do you say it sucked? I said it with all due respect, though. Yeah, I know. So but what? Why, no, I just could never. I just could never get into the whole Power Rangers thing. I think the one thing about Power Rangers that I actually liked when I was younger was. The Power Rangers movie with, uh, like, what is it, like Ivan Ooze yeah. or whatever? Uh-huh. I thought that movie was cool when I was younger. Okay. But I never could get into the show. I get it. I mean, it's very, it's very cheesy. It's the, sa- the, the episodes are all the same. I get it. Yeah, I think it was more for me. Like, I was more into, like, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just more into that whole scene, I think. Sure. So, Ronnie, tell us, what didn't suck? to you the curse of oak island mm-hmm. wait hold on a second that's your that's your third in your top three yeah did you start mm-hmm. just didn't you just wow. start watching that no i'm in the sixth season oh my gosh you, you were plowing loving through that. that baby you're loving that man I, no curse. well i didn't just start watching it i've been watching it for probably like the last year oh okay so like i've went back through and caught up oh. but like i'm current right now they're in the sixth season like nice. i look forward to this show like every week like I, I don't know. I can't get enough. How are you watching that? Is, that? is that on a streaming service or is that just your history channel? Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to have to I'm gonna check that out. If that's your top so, three, because I've never even watched one single episode. I, I love it, but it's also like it, it combines like a lot of stuff. Like I've always thought like treasure hunting in general is really like a cool thing. Yeah, it is. But yeah. it combines like it combines like a ton of history also like within it. You know what I mean? So like it just I don't know. Like it's just really, really interesting. Like obviously they haven't found a treasure or anything like that on the island, but every week they like uncover these you know things. It's like something happened on the island, and they just don't know what happened yet. They believe that somebody buried like a treasure there, and they keep finding like clues and like artifacts and stuff that like just it's really just interesting. Yeah, that's one of the cool things about that like treasure hunting because like a clue, you find something new, um, and basing yeah. that off of history and what happened in the past, you know, that's, I, I, yeah, I do enjoy that. Like the, like the national treasure movies, you know, one clue yeah, leads, I to, thought another those were clue, awesome leads to another clue, even though you, you may not find a treasure, you're finding different things. Um, well, and I think the, I think the thing that's like kind of cool and exciting about it is so like, there have been like, like vast treasures throughout history that were never like found or documented and found, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, the thought of that, like all of these like treasures from the past could be in one place is like really cool. So like, I think the coolest like thought behind it is like behind the show. The coolest like theory is basically once the Knights Templar got ran out of like France and they started to be basically hunted all over the place, they basically gathered up all the treasures that they had amassed over the years and all those treasures vanished. So like it's cool to think that they could have taken it and underwent like this giant like this you know this gigantic process of burying this treasure with these booby traps and stuff like that to think that it could be like in one place 
you know, include like the Holy Grail, like the Ark of the Covenant, like all of these like artifacts that have never been found. Like that's a really cool thing. Yeah. Hmm. Wait, the Ark of the Covenant and the Holy Grail, those were found Indiana Jones. <laughs> that's another reason why Indiana Jones is so awesome because of the na- the treasure yeah. hunting. Yeah, it's really cool. Hmm. Cool. So yeah, nice. I, I get I get pumped over that show more than really anything. Like the other shows, You're like pumped. I can watch any time of the day, all the time. But like I have to watch this one. It's on like Tuesdays. Like it's the show that like I gotta watch it Tuesday. Like all I right. can't wait. Sounds good. And Mark, what is your last of the top three TV shows of all time for you? All right, last, but certainly not least, it holds a very dear place in my heart. I smell a Tartarus. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that, that Tartarus is spinning around. That Tartarus uh, <laughs> Wow. No, uh, <laughs> my last selection is Doctor Who, for sure. Who um, are you? Who, who, who? <laughs> Well, Doctor Who, that show's been around longer than that song has. Um, crazy. Which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's just a show that's always been near and dear to my heart. I used to watch it when I was a kid. I would watch reruns of classic Doctor Who with um, with Tom Baker as the fourth Doctor. Um, it's a huge part of British culture. Um, it's kind of like, you know, how Star Wars and Star Trek is here in the United States. Um, it's very much a part of our culture and superheroes are as well very much in, in, in British culture, you know, Dr. Who is, is, is a major part of who they are. Um, you know, it's, it's the, it's the longest running science fiction television show. Um, uh, one of the oldest, um, you know, it, it aired the first episode aired the day after the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Wow. Um, so, um, and again, you see a theme here of, of fantastical science fiction television shows involving time travel. Um, I just, I love the idea of the doctor and the fact that he just travels around in this, in this. Or she. Or she. Yes. Very true. Um, travels around in, in this this time machine well it can travel through space and time and it's stuck in the form of this old 50s police telephone box um and and just the fact like the doctor he has such depth to his character um or she or she <laughs> <laughs> listen <laughs> 12 out of the 13 well technically 14 um doctors have been a he so okay uh, i'm still getting used to the whole she thing which is fine because jody whitaker does an excellent job as the doctor so now out of all, know. all 14 doctors and all thirty-five thousand series or seasons there are <laughs> which is your, <laughs> i mean it's been on for like 80 years how what's your, which one is your favorite which season or which doctor so a lot of times um People who are into Doctor Who, Doctor Who, kind of split between classic Who and new Who. Yeah, and so I would tend to go that way. Um, of the classic Doctors, the fourth Doctor, Tom Baker, is my favorite because of his his personality, um, and, and that's the most beautiful thing about the character of the Doctor: um, the fact that whoever it was wrote probably one of the single greatest plot devices ever known to a TV show. The fact that, you know, when this character is close to death, he's able to it's essentially regenerate and change himself while maintaining himself as or herself as the doctor. Um, and so that gives the possibility for actors who are the actor who's playing or actress playing the doctor to to actually go ahead and leave and have a new person come in and take over the role. And make it their own while maintaining base characteristics. And that's what's helped the show last for so long. Um, but so for Classic Who, definitely the fourth Doctor, Tom Baker. Um, he just had a very um, charismatic and playful type of Doctor. 
um, but someone that could really captivate you with his performance. And the same goes for um, New Who with the 10th Doctor, uh, David Tennant. Um, he, he hands down, um, has been the best, uh, in the, in the new series. Um, his, his personality, um, his gravitas in terms of, of the character and understanding the layers of the doctor, um, is just incredible. And David Tennant is just an incredible actor in general. Now, is David Tennant, is he in that Jessica Jones Netflix series? Yes. Okay. All right. I thought I've heard that name before. um, he is Kilgrave, the, the oh, that's bad right. guy okay, on the show. Gotcha. Um, Doctor Who is just uh, it's just something that I've always held close to my heart. You know, it's an incredible part of um my wife and I's relationship. The fact that we bonded over Doctor Who, the fact that our wedding was themed after Doctor Who. Um, you know, it, it's something that we certainly absolutely love and 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 share together. Um, so, I mean, that's certainly a show that I will never forget. Awesome. So. Nice, man. Um, my final pick has got to be, it's my newest, it's my newest show to be on the top three, and that is Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah. Nice. Nine-Nine. Nine-Nine. Nice. I just, cool, 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 cool. That show is, <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many episodes my wife and I have been watching that show and I felt like we did not stop to breathe. Like we just laughed yeah. over and over again. It's like shock comedy. Like it's just like one joke after the other and it's so ridiculous, but just their delivery and the way they do it. Uh, I love the comedy. I love the characters. Yeah. Um, the mix between murder, not murder mystery, cop mystery, comedy, uh, the dry humor of some of the characters and then the outlandish comedy. Like, like Captain Holt? Man, oh man, the Captain Holt is just like, <laughs> don't make me raise my tone. You made me raise my tone. Here I go, <laughs> getting angry. Like he's just like, yeah. And then like Hitchcock and Sully, like back in the day, I probably would have told you that if in an alternate universe, my best friend Tom and I like just so happened to work at a at a police station and we grew old together at the police station, we would be Hitchcock and Sully. Like oh, just Hitchcock doing and Sully, the inappropriate, that like stupid stuff. Their origin story. Oh, <laughs> yes, their origin so story. Good. It's so it's funny. So good. <laughs> so funny. Oh. I think one of the more I think the most recent episode I watched was the opening where someone was telling uh Holt to to not raise his voice because he was gonna scare Hitchcock or Scully. I can't remember which one. And then they they start arguing about if they're going to do it. And all of a sudden, someone yells and is like, you just made Hitchcock spill tomato sauce all over himself. And he has, like, tomato sauce going down his shoulders. (laughs) And he's like, why did you guys scare me? And it's just uh, just so funny. Why did he have tomato sauce? (laughs) Yeah, why did he have tomato sauce? Like, they're always eating food. But just all the characters, like, like a lot of times, like, my wife, Mindy, she connects with uh, Amy. Is her name Amy? I Amy. think yeah. Peralta's girlfriend, now girlfriend, and who just became a sergeant and all that jazz. Uh, but, like, my wife really connects with her OCD nature. But then she also connects with Rosa's – Rosa? Yep. Yeah. Am I getting the names right? I want to you say Rosa em. Parks, yeah. and I'm like, that's not right. That's the lady no. that's said on yeah, the Rosa. Bus. Yep. Rosa. But, yeah, Rosa, like, she really connects with her, like, dry aggressiveness, like, and just not taking any crap from anyone. But deep down, she's a really – like really emotional and like really cares and stuff, but she doesn't like yeah. to show it. Whenever like, she does that, she's like, shut up. Yeah. Shut, shut up. up. You're an idiot. You tell anyone I'll kill you. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just like, Oh man. And I can't off the top of my head. I can't think of like my favorite. I didn't write down any of my favorite episodes or, uh, but just the moments in it are just, they're just funny. So, and I really, yeah. I so really quick note, that quick show. note. It's funny that you mentioned Rosa Parks, you know, Pat, you know how I mentioned that you missed the the best episode of the season, the recent season of Doctor Who? Was it, it about, was Rosa, about Parks? Rosa Parks? Wasn't that episode two? Episode two, Rosa Parks was in it, wasn't she? I don't remember if it was episode two or not. Here we go. They meet Rosa yeah. Parks, I think. Yeah. So, so you, you did, did watch, watch that. the best episode. <laughs> you right. still didn't continue. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Oh, man fantastic which just sucks uh, because i really love time travel and i just for whatever reason i just I couldn't get into it i enjoy the word tartarus more than anything 
<laughs> Good old Tartarus. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, Duncan Rogers wanted to share his top three shows. He said, here they are. Number one, Scrubs. Classic comedy. Number two, Arrested Development. Also a funny one. Oh, I do like Arrested Development. Yes. And then number three, Teen Titans Go. Oh, I don't know how to feel about that. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know what to say. My kids are watching it right now on Netflix, and there are some funny funny episodes there are other ones that are like oh, okay but anyways he also had this to say he said show that impacted my life was generation kill counts as a miniseries but it was amazing and depicted the iraq war perfectly uh, and then he goes on to share some other random facts favorite spot to watch uh i'd be on the far right of the couch so i can lean against the armrest all right uh, oh and also i usually watch tv shows alone and then friends and I text back and forth about it throughout the week. Uh, Duncan, I usually sit on the left side of my couch. I lean uh, with my left arm. And then usually during the second show, I scoot over to the middle of the couch to get closer to my wife. And then she says, what are you doing? Go back over to your side. <laughs> 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 Not because she doesn't like to cuddle with me or she doesn't love me, but because I radiate heat at about... 100 degrees hotter than she does and she can feel the heat and she doesn't like to get all sweaty and stuff so uh, I go back to my side and then uh, yeah and I always watch TV with my wife I I will confess that I never watch TV shows by myself the only thing I do by myself is read books and play video games and most of the time it's play video games but my TV shows are always tethered to my wife so if my wife doesn't like it I don't watch it that's why I haven't watched Stranger Things that's probably why I haven't watched uh, a lot of Seinfeld or The Office because my wife doesn't always connect with the comedy. So it is what it I is. Get it. How about you guys? How do you watch TV? Who do you watch TV with? Well, I watch both with my wife, with my kids, and by myself. But if I am watching, I'm usually laying down. Like I cannot sit up and watch a TV show. It's always laying down. Like it's you just, hog a whole piece of furniture it's a and you're weird just like, thing. sit on the you floor, know, like, family. My wife my wife usually uh, is, is sitting up. Her legs are up on the ottoman and I'm laying down. And then I would say after about an hour, she's like, can I lay down? And then, <laughs> and then we shift. And you're like, bow, chicka, bow, wow. <laughs> yes. <Wow. laughs> you're like, yes, you can lay down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. You'll get it someday. <laughs> <laughs> someday you will don't you worry I definitely since we recently um, got a reclining couch um, oh yeah um, <laughs> bow chicka bow wow <laughs> spring break woo <laughs> woo spring break party no I'm, I'm usually reclining on my own chair part of the couch if you will um, I used, I was very much like you, Patrick. Like I, I, I always lay down, and and Kristen like would absolutely hate it because I would take up most of the couch, and she's like, "Why do you always have to lay down? Why can't you just sit up?" And I was like, "Well, because I, this is how I feel comfortable. This is the way I relax." Um, but since we yeah. got the couch that has reclining seats or whatever, I get my own reclining area. She gets her own reclining area, and it all works out. So was that the reason why you got the new couch? Yes. <laughs> really? No, not really. No, <laughs> awesome. not at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, we just wanted to do. We just wanted to change up things and get something a little newer and nicer. But it it, it is certainly nicer. helps. For sure. Any other? Uh, I typically watch TV shows by myself or with my cat. No, not really with a cat. He usually doesn't come in. <laughs> But uh, no, I I also have a uh, reclining couch. So he comes in, starts turning much channels. Like fully recline. Turns what? on Animal Planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we watch we watch that stuff. Um, no, but I usually sit uh, completely reclined, like all the way back. So I am practically mm-hmm. laying down. Also, gotcha. You ever lay down and play video I, games? I have a hard weird. time to do that. Oh, it's so weird. Yeah, it, I I can't lay I, down I and watch do anything. That. I will fall asleep if I lay down and watch or do anything. Laying down. That's part of the fun. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. What's part of the fun? I know. <laughs> falling asleep. Oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's uh-huh. part of the Oh, that right. Is. Yes. Falling asleep. Of course. Yep. <laughs> uh huh. Moving on. Sheldor had this to say 
<laughs> Moving on. My top three shows have to be South Park, Rick and Morty, then Naruto. I like these shows for the jokes and all about humor. What make oh, all about humor? And then he jumps into a question: What makes you stay with the show, or are there any things that would make you hate the show right off? I don't like any show that 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 treats me like uh, I'm an idiot. Like I wouldn't get a joke, or it like it. I like I like shows that just go through jokes that they use. Like Big Bang, I used to like Big Bang a lot the first couple of seasons because of how like science based and nerdy based their jokes were. I don't like I don't like shows that make me that treat me like a child when they're not a kid show. Gotcha. So I like them to either be a kid show or be an adult show and treat me like an adult and be smart about your. Comedy. For me, it's like all about the the story compelling story if i'm not compelled or if you're boring me within the first like two three four episodes like i have a hard time sticking with that and i hear that a lot about like different comedy shows like for example the office and parks and rec it's like well you gotta power through the first season well i have a hard time with that um (laughs) yeah for me um if it's a comedy and I go through an entire episode without laughing or having at least one belly laugh. Uh, I don't watch those. Like, I tried to watch Park and Rec. Um, and I thought, you know, it's it's like, it's a show that, <laughs> that I would, sounds I like would a, think I would love. a car show. I think it's Parks and Rec, isn't it? What did I say? Park and Rec. <laughs> you said Park oh, and Rec. <laughs> oh, see? I don't even know <laughs> it. <laughs> Someone parked a car. And I think we've got an idea for I a show. I watched like five episodes. <laughs> and I didn't laugh like... But more than five times, I'm like, okay, this this isn't for me, you know. Like, if I gotta be laughing at each individual scene, you know. Um, but uh, if I'm watching like a drama, if there's a little bit of mystery involved, like I, I like that, like like Game of Thrones, um, little mystery involved with that. Um, but yeah, if, I, if I'm watching a comedy and, and and I'm not laughing, then yeah, that that makes me stop watching it. Yeah, I I, I would say I'm somewhere along the same lines. Um, I just have to be, I don't know, like, I guess like I have to be either really interested in the subject or it almost be a comedy because in most of like drama shows and stuff like that, I'm not really into, um, you know, I just like shows that I can flip on and, you know, just laugh through them. Makes gotcha. Sense. Um, so the next comment from one of our buddies, Tim Pollan. Uh, leads us into another question that's very important to think about is what shows do you think influenced or impacted you uh, beyond just the show? Uh, He said three influential shows in my life. Okay. One, I got from my parents, MASH. Two, I got my mom hooked on the books. Then the television show, Dexter. And then the third, uh, I introduced my kids to one of my favorite worlds, Star Wars, The Clone Wars, the animated series. Um, but what kind of shows impacted you um, and you you enjoyed or, or hit kind of like that perfect moment? For example, I'll just give a quick example. Uh, when I watched Parenthood with, with my wife, Mindy, uh, after we had our second son, uh, it really hit in that time just when we were getting used to having two kids and... Uh, just experiencing full-fledged two-kid parenthood. I don't know if anybody uh, remembers that transition, Patrick, if you remember, but it is not like double the work when you go from one to two kids. It's like triple the work because you have to deal with one of them individually, the other individually, and then when they're together, it's a whole different monster. Uh, right. So parenthood was a really good show that my wife and I watched that didn't make my, my cut, but definitely gets an honorable mention for being impactful. I'm going to go the exact opposite of that. Do it. So one of the most... Ba- impact- the Bachelor. <laughs> the impactful <laughs> TV show was when I was a teenager. And this show is called Baywatch. Oh gosh. Oh, man. <laughs> what was impactful about this? Was it a Joey was impactful? A or was I was it? a okay, teenager. Fair, yes, it was a Joey impactful. <laughs> I don't think I really had any shows that were really extremely influential. I think for me, like I use like TV shows as just like almost like an escape, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't think any of them were specifically like influential on anything that I've done. Um, You know, obviously I talked about Doctor Who and how much it influenced me as a kid and 
<laughs> and the fact that, you know, it it's one of the things that my wife and I bonded over. So I guess in a way that's that's influential to me. Uh, Pretty good one. Yeah. The show that for me, uh, when I first realized that shows could be inappropriate was Beavis and Butthead. (laughs) 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 Not only do I remember watching that show with some of my friends from middle school, I remember the first time my dad and my mom watched the show with me. And instead of telling me to turn it off, my dad started sitting there going, uh, 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 My dad did that to me too. (laughs) And and it, and it blew me away that he was laughing along with it. Like, I don't know if he was, you know, this is the same dad that bought me Snoop Doggy Dog. That's uh, true. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) So he probably had no idea what was going on. He just heard the dumb laugh and was just like, uh, (laughs) and (laughs) fire, fire. (laughs) And, uh, yeah. So Beavis and Butthead. Uh, the Wonder Years, when I was in elementary school, middle school. Love the Wonder, Wonder Years. Wonder Years, man. I forgot all about that. Man, one. that was a classic. That was a good one. That was a good one. And then uh, the most recent one with my kids, uh, kind of like uh, Tim mentioned with Star Wars The Clone Wars, was Lego Ninjago, which seemingly should have just been like a a silly Lego show with silly comedy, but it actually had a deep, meaningful story through, uh, I think, it's second and third season especially, where at the end of the second or third season, I don't remember which one, uh, my wife and I actually uh, teared up. It was so emotional. So it was very well done, and uh, I'd recommend it for any parent to watch with their, especially like five or six-year-old is the perfect age. But even my uh, nine-year-old daughter, she or eight-year-old daughter, she she likes it and appreciates it. So, um. Ash Ingram wanted to ask us, she said, my question for you guys, if you could be any TV character, who would you want to be? And which show would you want to live your life as that character? The twist is you can't be the show. You can't use this, the show and the character that it comes from. So you have to use a character from one show and uh, uh, a sh- yeah, and then a different show from another, if that makes sense. like. So you take a character from one show, put them in another show? Yes, thank you. And that's who you are. I want to be Steve Urkel in Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> Did I do right. that? No, I'm just kidding. That was just an example. So what do you guys got? I want to be Jack Bauer in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Ooh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, man, this is way harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, which movie do I want to take The Rock out of? <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. Oh. Is The Rock on a show? Other than like show. WWE, that is a show. Yeah, Titan there you games. go. I will take the People's Champion, The Rock, and put him in the office. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh gosh, um, Mark. I would have to take. I'd have to take the Doctor, and put. Him specifically going with the tenth Doctor on Game of Thrones, and I'm going to take Ross from Friends and put him on Lost, so that he can make paste pants on the island and teach everyone how to not survive. All right, <laughs> there you go. Uh, Travis Popsicle said, "Current shows are almost better than movies at this point. Game of Thrones is epic. Too many awesome shows to list." I mostly watch movies and TV shows alone with headphones, so I don't get interrupted. But we'll rewatch stuff with the kids. All right. Well, I think we have covered the exhaustive list of TV shows from the 60s until today. Uh, Mark, let's hear your music you got for us. TV show themes, TV type songs. What do you got for us? So, as always... Good morning. You can uh, check out the Good Morning Guys morning playlist on Spotify. Just type in in the search bar the Good Morning Guys morning playlist. It is also on iTunes. On iTunes as well. Thank you, Bernabe. Um, So this week, obviously, I pulled songs that were used as TV themes. And so you will be happy to know, Lucas and Patrick, but the first song I picked is I'll Be There I'll For Be You. I'll Be There For You. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, which was not written by the Rembrandts, but performed by the Rembrandts. It's um, not just a good theme song. It's a good way of life. 
Mm-hmm. I'll be um, there for you. The second one, uh, Patrick might actually appreciate. Not sure, but I think he will. Um, is the song "Save Me" from Remy Zero? Yeah, yeah, which was the theme song to Smallville. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. And last, but certainly not least, the theme song to the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Yes. Perfect. Let's sing it right now in West. Okay, maybe not. No, not right now. <laughs> but you can go ahead and listen to it on the playlist. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Well, that is all we got for this good morning. Feel free to leave us a positive but honest review on iTunes if you have a couple minutes to spare. After Mr. Pastor Ham's Neighborhood this Friday, Ronnie is up next with the craziness once we get 20 reviews and or ratings. So let your voice and opinion be heard. Also remember, if you'd like to join in our future episodes or connect with our community but are not sure how to do so, check out the podcast details in the show notes that have all of our info on our Discord server. It is free and a fun way to connect directly with us in the community. Uh, also, there are our Twitter handles. Our show's Twitter handle is at the GMG Podcast. And you can also email us or you can even call us at what number, Mark? 929 GMG Guys. There you go. That's right. Call in, leave a message, make up an intro to the show, or just ask a question. Our phone number is your oyster. Beyond that, talk at you again next week on podcast services around the globe as we have our first birthday boy episode where one of us gets full control over the show and topic. Tune in next week to see who that will be because I can't remember if it's been mentioned and we'll discuss something. All righty then, Pat, Mark, and Ronnie J., who has delayed his New Year's resolution of watching Superman for the 22nd week in a row. You listeners, our friends and fam, go get your good morning and may God bless and guide your lives as you live, work, and game. Aus Wiedersehen. Catch up. One, two, three, four. Oh, gosh, I can't believe I screwed that up right at the beginning. I'm so <laughs> I mad. Told, I said, nope, immediately, and you just still did going. <laughs> and I was like, no, nope, I keep going. And then you guys called it out, and I'm like, uh <laughs> <laughs> You wanted to go back like it was going to happen. I know. I really wanted to go back. Go back in time. Come on, you guys love going back in time. Why couldn't you go back in time just this once? I never get Do to start over. Comedy. I think I've started over one time. I got to start over once. You guys let me. Yeah, and, and then, then you I even put that in the, in the bloopers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I never really got to. I've never gotten to raise any screw up I've ever had. <sighs> oh. Dang it.